Grief is such an overpowering emotion, especially after losing someone so close to you. It can take months, years, even decades to get back to normal, if that's even possible after experiencing a significant loss. This podcast was created to help you move through and release the emotions, allowing you to heal the hurt and begin living again. Listen in as I chat with medical professionals, grief workers, and people who have first-hand experience in losing a loved one, what their experience has been, and what they did to help heal themselves and those around them. Life isn't always sunshine and rainbows, but I believe there is always a silver lining if you're willing to look. Welcome to the Release Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Release the Grief Podcast. Today, I'm here with Abby Scherzer. I hope I got that right. Yes. Um, and she is here to talk specifically about losing a friend. Is that correct? Yes. And we're going to dive into what that looks like um, from a different perspective. So this isn't losing a spouse. This isn't losing a child. This is losing a good friend, someone that you hold very dear in your life, Um And this is a different type of grief that a lot of people go through, but don't even think to put substantiating thoughts and feelings behind it because they think, oh, well, it's not my significant other. This is not my child, my father, my mother, whatever it is. This is quote unquote, just a friend, but it's so much more than just a friend. And the feelings that we have associated with these uh, are lifelong and vast. So please welcome Abby. Thank you so much for being on this, this podcast with me. And um, you want to share just a little bit about like the topic that we're going to talk about? Like, yeah, thank you for having me. Um, Almost seven years ago, I lost uh, a best friend who we had been friends for 30 years that that summer. We had met um, when she was two and I was three. And um, we spent uh, the, I mean, major portions of our life together, all of the changes, having children, getting married, um, her losing actually both of her parents, which kind of led up to why why and how she had passed away as well. But, you know, through my parents' divorce, we were together through all of the growing up and becoming adults and all the changes of life. And um, losing her was like losing a spouse, like losing a sibling because we were, we were so close and had been friends. I mean, I knew her as long as I've known my younger sister. Um, So we met the same year that my sister was born. And um, yeah, so it was, uh, it's really impacted my life in really interesting ways because I had plans, you know, when you have a a relationship with somebody, you have plans for when we're older, we're going to do this and this and this, and our children are going to do this together. And when all that's just stops now, I'm the only one that's remembering those plans and, you know, kind of adapting to my life without her. So you guys grew up together. Did you live right down the road from each other? So how it worked was I live in up North Michigan, um, kind of a resort ish area where, um, a lot of the people, a lot of the homes around the lake where I lived were uh, summer residents. Um, you know, people would buy their up north house and come up for the summer. And yeah. that's what had happened. She lived in the Detroit area and her parents um, had bought this cottage next door to my permanent home that I grew up in as their summer home. So every summer she was my, you know, my summer sister. And um you know, and I, we would keep in touch throughout the school year and we'd see each other, especially once we got into high school, we would visit each other a lot more often because it was just, you know, a two hour drive or whatever. But, um, we, uh, every day in the summer, like Memorial day through labor day, we were together every single day and for, for my whole life, you know, three years old, all the way up until, you know, we became adults. So that's, I mean, I'd say we grew up together, but now in her, you know, in these years since her death, um, I'm realizing that she had a whole nother life, you know, two hours away from me and these other best friends that are also feeling the same, the same pain and the same loss that I'm feeling. And that's been, um, that's been a journey for me to kind of deal with, you know, especially on social media, I see somebody else post something about her and saying, and my best friend, this or that. And, 
I'm like, no, that my best, best friend, friend. my best friend. And so I've been um, gradually over the years, like I said, it's been seven years, gradually over the years, kind of reaching out to these other people and sharing our stories because the girl that they knew and were best friends with is you know, might be a slightly different version of the person that I knew. And so I'm, you know, now getting past the anger surrounding her death um, and kind of just finding good stories, you know, about, about her life and about how and why she impacted people so positively and why so many people miss her. Right. Yeah. That, that's fascinating. Um, Cause you don't think of those things. Like you grew up together, but like there's this whole other world that you weren't a part of Mm -hmm. that you have no idea of. And and now you're seeing things and you're like, but wait, I thought, so it's almost like you're raised in the summertime, like sisters Mm -hmm. and then come to find out it's like, well, wait, she has this whole other family, this whole other friend group that I know nothing about. Yeah. That, that's because fascinating. She came to, you know, because her family would travel up North to where I lived full time. Everyone in my world knew her, but right. people in her world didn't know me. Right. So it was, it's very interesting in her, you know, in her death, you know, meeting these people that are, you know, they'll say, I, well, I've heard about you. I've heard of you. Right. You know, it's so great to meet you. Is it great to meet me now in this circumstance? Not really. Um, but you know, I hadn't because Detroit wasn't part of our relationship, you know, up North was so everyone in my world, all of my friends and family and everybody knew her, but I didn't know a lot of the people that, you know, she spent most of the year with. Right. Yeah. That adds a whole new layer onto the whole grief thing. Cause you're like, well, I thought that I knew her, but I knew nothing about this. Mm-hmm. Like, she didn't think of it maybe when, when she was alive and all those things that she has this whole other world that you're not privy to. Yeah. It's fascinating. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind my asking, how did she pass? So a uh, little bit of a story there. Her father passed away when we were um, early, early teenage years, um, 12, 13 years old. Her dad passed away from a heart attack and she was there. She witnessed it. She, you know, called the 911, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so she, you know, was raised then by a mom who worked full time, who um, was a drinker also. So she, um, you know, got into... She was very independent. I don't want to say she got in trouble because she had excellent grades. She was so smart. So, you know, graduated from high school, like one of the top of her class, went to college, but she, um, she was an alcoholic and, you know, and she had gotten that from her parents. Um, so, you know, as years went by, she had a couple of children, had gotten married and then still lived with her mother, but then her mother passed away. (laughs) also oh, no. from a heart attack. Um, and that was a very tragic, um, situation around her death and everything. And, you know, my friend living with her mom, her, Kathleen is my friend, Kathleen living with her mom and her children. And one of the children being home when the, when the grandma died and it was on Kathleen's birthday that this happened. And then, so for oh. the, so then she ended up passing away only a year and a half after her mother did. So wow. basically in her own grief from, okay, the only person left in her life, really her mom, um, passed away and she's, you know, she's in her home. She's supposed to be taking care of them, the home and the bills and all of the different things. I'm sure that there was something left for her to do this. Um, but she didn't, she completely shut down and, um, ended up dying, you know, her, eventually she passed away then from, uh, alcohol induced liver failure. So, um, gotcha. yeah, she had some or- other organs had, you know, kind of shut down earlier in the month mm-hmm. and, but she hid a lot of that from me because of distance. You know, we talked often. I suppose it would be easy to. But I didn't know the severity of what was going on because I wasn't physically there in person. And I had just had a baby when her mom passed away. So I couldn't be there for her physically because I had my own family and my own things to take care of. And you know, I thought that she was down, you know, two hours away from me in Detroit, taking care of her own life and her own children. And, 
and instead she was just drinking and um it was it was really pretty tragic situation once um so her brother she did have a brother younger brother that ended up right out of high school and just moved away and just mm. moved across the country so when he came home to help kind of take care of everything and plan things for the funeral. He had just been there a year prior to do it with her, you know, and thought everything was set up for his sister yeah. um, after his mother passed away. And then the bills hadn't been paid. The entire dining room table was piled up with all of the mail, probably from the entire year. Yeah. So many bottles of vodka yeah. in the house stashed everywhere in just various stages of, you know, being drank beyond so many and um you know then I being like the longest friend um the family you know some of the family members there's an aunt and uncle involved as well but that's pretty much it so I was brought in to kind of help plan and take care of all of her things because at this point also you know in the year since her mom had passed away she got divorced from her husband and, you know, then he had the, you know, he had the kids and, okay. um, it was just, uh, it was, it was quite a mess. And, and so you go through your stages of grief and I, I, I really didn't even mourn her. I was just angry for a really long time that that it got to, why did you let this happen? Like, well, and also anger at myself too. Yeah. I felt like if I had answered this phone call or that phone call or visited more, um, this wouldn't have happened. You know, I could have, I could have helped her. I could have saved her. I don't know. I could have, I didn't know how bad the situation had gotten to in just a year. Um, right what could I have done differently to, you know, so that she didn't pass away at 32 years old with two little kids that she left behind. And, um, so I, it took me a while to really get over that and, and, um, realize that she had a disease and there was nothing of any intervention I could have done that would have, that would have changed her situation. Absolutely not. Like I, we had a friend that, um, had taken his own life And he was in his forties, not married, no children. And he was always the type that he was never going to do that. Like he talked down on people that did that and um, something triggered, he was in the military as well. And something triggered him and he started having flashbacks and he had passed multiple, I wouldn't say multiple, but several uh, like mindset things that he had to for work or whatever to, to test for these things. And he'd passed them no problem, but out of the blue, he started going to a psychologist, something triggered. He started going to a psychologist and they put him on antidepressants. And it was within a, a month or so, I would say that he was gone. Um, and he, he took his own life after being staunchly against it. So it's like, and we had to go through, that was one of the, my husband was deployed at the time. And that was one of the first phone calls I had to give him was that this friend that he'd been very close to and served in the military with had taken his life. And so it was not you know, but looking back, it's like, there were so many signs, but being in it, we didn't see the signs because we were so in our own life. We didn't, it's not that we didn't take the time. We just didn't see them through the maze of all the things that we were, that was happening in our life at that time as well. Yeah. And so it's easy to miss the subtleties. Yeah. Um, It's not necessarily our fault either, just because you know, you talk to them and you want to, to share your life with them, but also it's up to them to, to communicate more, even if, you know, it sucks. Yeah. But it just plain sucks to be honest. Absolutely. I had to, you know, throughout that last few years, um, I knew that she was kind of going off the deep end. I didn't know the severity of a lot of her situations with her, you know, with the custody of her children. And and apparently a lot of that had depended on her actually living with her mother. So when her mother passed away, that changed her custody situations. And I didn't know that. Um, So there is, you know, different pieces that I wasn't aware of until after she had passed away Mm -hmm. and that she just didn't tell me the ugly things, you know, but then also I kept a little bit of boundary with her because I had just had my second daughter and 
I wanted to have, you know, a healthy, happy family of my own. And right. I didn't have the time or the energy to put into hers as well, you know, with a lot of the issues that she was having. And so, um, you know, that, that carried a lot of guilt for me for a few years, actually, because, you know, I do have a happy, healthy family. I am blessed. I am, you know, I do have a lot of things that, you know, and the means that I could have helped her in the time and, and, and all of that. But again, would it have made a difference? Um, so it's, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, just kind of just sad, the whole situation around her passing away. And she passed away on my dad's birthday too. Oh and my so that was my dad's birthday. And then my dad's the one who actually called to tell me because one, uh, the aunt, one of the family members who was one of the first to know, uh, didn't want to tell me herself. Um, mm-hmm. So she called my dad to to tell me because she said she just didn't want to, she didn't want to be the one to deliver that news. Right. Yeah, and um, because she's the same one who a year earlier had delivered the news that her mom had, the mom had passed away. Um, and so my dad, uh, I just feel so bad for him on his birthday that he had to deliver that news to me. Yeah. So we're getting, you know, I think that now it's been, you know, seven years that I'm at the point where I can celebrate my dad's birthday without being like, oh, it's a sad day. It's still my dad's birthday. And it is sad that my friend passed away. Um, but it's, you know, it's celebrating that my dad, my dad, my dad is still here. So, right. Yeah. I know. It's almost like you feel guilty because you're like, well, there's this good thing in my life, but then there's also this bad thing, which, which path mm-hmm. do I take? Do I celebrate the good or do I think about the bad? And it's like, you have to constantly consciously make these choices and mm-hmm. you know, it sucks. It really sucks, but I'm glad that you're able to see the silver lining in that measure. Yeah. Um, all about finding the silver linings. Mm-hmm. Uh, through this, this thing we called life and all of the lessons that it loves to teach us, um, about how small we really are in this world and how, you know, at the blink of an eye, we're always walking a tightrope and Mm -hmm. everything can change in just a moment's notice. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, there's kind of some funny things too, you know, that have happened since, um, yeah, like funny, haha, but I don't know. Um, (laughs) we were growing up, we lived on, we grew up on this lake. Right. And, um, Mm -hmm. we, she said that when, you know, as we got older, especially since she had both of her parents passed away, she'd talk about, you know, when she passes away, she wants to be cremated or or what have Mm -hmm. you. And she had told me that she wanted her, um, ashes to be, you know, spread on the lake where we grew up. Um, but then when she passed away, obviously none of that was in, in writing and they had already bought the space in the mausoleum, you know, by her parents for it. So I was able to get a portion of it, right. but I never did it. And then in 2020, there was this big um, situation here in Michigan where there were f- four dams that failed and completely drained um, a couple of lakes mm-hmm. and the lakes haven't come back. And that was one of the lakes. Oh no! So my <laughs> one of my daughters, my older daughter, she said, "Well, mom, it's a good thing that you didn't do it because now she'd be she would have been in somebody's basement because right? you know the lakes had drained." So I still have her ashes that I still need to do. You know, I needed you know per, you know I need to do something. You know, I still have family that lives. I don't live there anymore, but I know um the people who still live on the property that um her cottage had been on, mm-hmm. and then my grandpa still lives up there as well. So. Um, I do need to honor her wishes and do that at some point. And I think that then I will have, I know I I have, I say I have closure, but then I still have these situations where I'm like, man, it just stinks. You know, like when I turned 40 this last year, you know, and she wasn't there for just all these, you know, watching my children grow, watching her children grow yes. that she's not a part of. And it it's just, it bums me out because I look back when we were my kid's age and you know, how much of our life we had already lived. Yeah. At that point and the plans we had made and, um, you know, I want to still be able to honor her, you know, her memory and like all of the positive things, you know, because a lot, you know, even her children probably remember just 
darkness of the last few years because they were so little. And right. so I'm looking forward to the days um, when they're even old enough or, or want to, I would wait for them to ask me so I can share the fun stories, uh, you know, especially at the lake of, you know, the different, sh you know, shenanigans that we got into the books we read, the music we listened to um, a lot of these memories that I, they're core memories of mine that I'm not going to lose that I, you know, I would love to share with, with um, her children. Have you thought about writing them down so that they have them? Like I actually have, I have written a lot of it down and I'm like, oh, nobody yeah. else is interested in, um, you know, her life story probably in the long run, except for me and, you know, right. her children eventually. So I have, you know, as I think of things, I write, I write them down. But like I said earlier, I don't know, I don't know all of the stories. I don't know what right. she was like in school. I, you know, and I, I know right. a little bit because I've become friends with some of her friends over the years. Um, but like, even as an adult, like having play dates with her kids, we, we, we didn't really do that handful of times, but right. not often she had those friends for that. And I've, um, you know, befriended some of those ladies over the years too, and, and you know, shared stories and it's, um, you know, and they have the same, um, you know, this, the same, you know, thoughts that come to them of, you know, we wanted to watch our kids grow up together and, you know, do things and, you know, be the, be the mom sitting on the porch, you know, watching the kids play. And, yeah. and um, that brings comfort to me too, because I know that I'm not alone. You know, sometimes right. I feel like I'm alone feeling this, my best friend of 30 years, even though I win, I knew her longer, but, um, <laughs> you right? know, she they, was my friend exactly, first. <laughs> exactly. But, um, they also loved her probably as much as, as much as I did. And they miss her as much as I did because oh, she was sure. part of their life every day. She um, sounds like an amazing person. She really was. So it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to explain this piece somebody when you say, oh, I just, I, I lost my friend and I'm still not over it. But it was, she was more than that. She was family. She was a sister. She was, my sisters think of her as a sister. So it was like losing a sibling is how I feel about it. Right. Well, I think that people wind their ways or wind their, their, their spirits and stuff get entwined with ours without us even realizing it. And nothing is ever like clear cut. Here's the beginning. Here's an end. Nothing is ever like that. It's more along the lines of, Oh, this has a part here. Like I have big memories here. And like, when I walk over here and I smell the donuts rising or something like that, or cooking, baking, whatever, that triggers another memory, mm -hmm. you know, like they were a baker, like grandparents and stuff like that. Like these all trigger memories within us. Yeah. And I think that the longer that we spend time with people and get to know their auras, I'm big in spirituality, get to know their auras and their spirits and stuff like that. They blend with ours. Yeah. And it's hard to tell when one stops and one begins and vice versa. And so it just, I don't know. It's interesting. I find it all very interesting. Like it sucks. It sucks that this whole podcast exists. It <laughs> sucks that all this stuff happens. But I think in the big scope of things, it just lets us know that we're all like connected. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. we can connect at a deeper level and on more, you know, more realms and more, more sphere. I don't know. I don't even know the words right now, but there are lots of people in, in our lives that we get connected to in a deep connection. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. And it's almost like it's ripped right out of your life and you get, you don't get closure. Sometimes you don't get to say goodbye. You don't get to, um, have this happily happy ever after you know mm -hmm. scenario yeah. because it just doesn't happen yeah and yeah With it's uh it's now. hard to relate to sometimes too I've had you know there's some some friends or family members um that have don't, don't understand why I'm still grieving I guess right because it was just a friend and she yeah. was but she was more than that. So it's just, you know, it's, I think it's easier to accept when you've lost, you know, a sibling or a parent or, you know, your spouse or a child right. even, but when, you know, but this was a relationship longer than I've known my husband. And right. so, um, she was my, you know, my, you know, you have to say your husband's your person, right. But you know, she was my person, you know, she was right. my 
you know, my, my soul, my soul sister, she knew me in ways that, well, now my, my husband, my children are the only ones who know me as intimately and deeply as she, as she did just because of friendships allow that, you know, to happen just like, you know, like a, like a sibling and, um, but it's just hard to, to explain and even, you know, relate to people who have lost a loved one. Like, oh, I know how that feels because I lost my best friend. Well, it wasn't your sister, you know, it wasn't your brother. Well, kind of, you know, it kind no, of, but I'm closer to this person. Yes, than my brother yes, or my exactly. Sister. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and I try to do my best to reach out to people who have lost, a, you know, some of my friends who, you know, have lost a really close friend without being too intrusive to say, you know, I, I've been in that situation. If you want to talk about it with, you know, and so and that that's happened, you know, a handful of times over the years. Um, right. And I think that helps a little bit, but I think for me, one of the processes, something that I'm just still working on is that, um, you know, trying to remember all of those happy, good times, all the plans for the future and just the fun things that we did and not the anger over her disease and just the choices that she made that I didn't agree with that ultimately led to her death. I'm trying to, I don't want to forget about them because they're definitely part of her story, but not dwell on that part. And also, um, you know, I I've gotten better about (laughs) over the years when I see people posting, you know, on social media about being her best friend and missing their best friend and getting mad that no, that's my best friend. I've gotten better about the jealousy aspect of it, I guess, because I do understand now that, you know, different, I mean, people impact a lot of many people different ways. And I mean, I, I don't know, and cause I'm not dead, um, how many people I have impacted, you know, <laughs> like that. So, um, I'm happy now I can look at it and be happy now that my best friend has impacted so many other right. people so positively and just that she was loved so much and that um, the circumstances around, you know, the choices she made those last few years didn't um, really tarnish her reputation, that she still has that positive, you know, happy, funny reputation that was the girl that I knew and loved. That's fantastic. It's so good that you're connecting with these other ladies too, um, these other people, because it gives you a broader view of who she really was as well. And, and concretes who you thought she was as well. Like as long yeah. as the stories are coming in the same it's mm-hmm. not like a different person over here, um, cause you hear about those, you know, where they're completely different people in different areas. Yeah. And stuff. So it's nice that you see that and it, it's, resonating on the same frequencies that she was the same type of person with you and when she was at this other place and her other life yeah that's, that's weird her other life yeah so, I mean it wasn't it, her it, other it, life it's but it was like still she her had, life. yeah aspect of her life <laughs> yeah exactly I mean it was different once we you know you, you become adults and you can drive and especially once you know um we got a little bit older and you know social you know because obviously we're in high school there wasn't social media that wasn't until right. we adults yeah. really but you know then dating ourselves right now right and, and then even in the seven years since she passed yeah. away how much has changed with um, oh, a lot. um with being able to connect with people around the world and, and everything so I think that that's um really been great to be able to see some of the other um stories that other people have and just the memories that's been really great to be able to connect with people that way. Um, even, um, so her children had, had two different fathers actually, and her youngest was a boy, it's boy. And his father actually passed away just this last year. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know the circumstances surrounding Mm -hmm. that, but from reading between the lines, I can assume that it was similar to her situation. Okay. So, but that family, but then that family uh, that's raising him now, I've been able to connect with them and, you know, and they know I'm here for the stories. If he ever, cause he was a baby when his mother passed okay. away seven years ago. Okay. Um, they know I'm the one with the stories. They know I'm the one to reach out to if he wants to know what was my mom like and this or that, or, you know, the music did she like and things. So I am really comforted in the fact that, um, you know, now that next generation, that, that her memory is not going to be lost completely, that I'm I still the that one beautiful. that can share that. I so. find that absolutely beautiful because 
uh, for, for a couple reasons, but the main one is my mom does is big into genealogy. Okay. And she traces our lineage back to like when we first came over here to America, like this is how far back she's traced it, like five, six, seven generations. And a lot of these, these, these generations, well, obviously they didn't have social media back then. They didn't, <laughs> um, they didn't keep a lot of journals back then. Yeah. They didn't do a lot of things like that, unless you were a scientist or someone, you know, that needed to. And so she's been searching this, you know, however many great grandfather, I think it's like a five or six great grandfather. Um, and she's found him in New York and she's found him in Wisconsin, but she can't even link the two states together for him. He's got children. She doesn't know how many, like this lineage is pretty much gone to her because there's no stories written down. He's not in books. He's not. Yeah. Uh, he's not talked about except for sporadically here or sporadically there, but not enough for the pieces to come together on him. She's been searching and hunting him for over 30 years. Oh, geez. Yeah. And so, and, and even with the technology that we have now, yeah. she's not finding him, if that makes mm -hmm. sense, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's, I find it absolutely wonderful that you're writing these stories down for these children because at some point they're going to want them yeah and if they don't maybe their children will you know right what's my grandmother like yeah because I mean everyone family? else in her family except for the one brother who you know moved across the country and I I haven't even heard from him in a while um everyone else has passed away you know the right. grandparents passed away and you know now one of the fathers has passed or like he passed away and it's um for the so for the children there you know they don't have that they don't have that connection to her even through her family because right. there's no family there right you have that connection too so I'm you know I'm really thankful that the children that their their father's families see me as that person that I'm really thankful that I was able to um you know have such an impact on her life that they still see me positively that way that they're you know that the families aren't you know just associating everybody who knew her as a negative because of right. all the situations but that they know that I'm you know that I'm the pot one of the positive you know relationships that she had had and that I do have the story I mean from when she was two I mean I I knew her before her brother was even born so I have, you know, I, it's really great that, um, I'm able to connect with these people now and we can share in, um, her memory because that was one of the things that I got really sad about early on after she passed away, that her memory would just die. And just, if, if anyone did remember her, it would be all of the bad things that happened in those last few years. And so it's, it's, you know, it kind of helped me heal from it too, but I still go back and forth with the, it's not fair. It's not fair. She oh, should be here. I she go through be that here raising her children. She should be here, you know, helping me style my daughter's hair for, you know, for, you know, pageants or dances or whatever. And it's, uh, so I go back and forth between being thankful for the life that she had and the friendship and the impact that she made on my life and just still going into bouts of anger it's just so funny those stages of grief are not just you don't run right through them and then you're done they they come back they're you know ping pong yeah exactly follow so, ping pong you go here, yeah here, and then here and then here and then here exactly and I, you can experience them all in one day in one hour sometimes definitely on which definitely. type of roller coaster you're on for the day yes exactly exactly so yeah it's uh I'm glad that I was able to have, that you have this platform, you know, to invite people to be able to talk about, you know, their unique situations. So thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I just, I don't know. I felt called to start it. Um, so I don't, so I don't, I don't talk about, I guess I don't talk about my story a lot either. So we had lost, I had lost my 60 or I'm sorry, my 19 year old stepdaughter in 2016, um, in a car wreck. So it was instant boom, gone. And then in 2020, uh, 2021, I'm sorry, 2021, I lost my four-year-old granddaughter in a car wreck. Boom, gone. And so it's like, we have these, we're only here for a limited amount of time. If we look back, uh -huh. 
sorry, I'm going to get emotional, but yes. if we look back into our lives, we think about all the things that we've done, all the things that have happened in our lives, all the near death experiences we've had, whether it was rollerblading and we hit our head on the side of a, a, a tube or whatever, we could have died. Mm -hmm. You know, riding in a car and this other car just narrowly missed us coming into our lane. You know, all of these near death, almost experiences that we are only here hanging by a thin thread, mm -hmm. a thin thread. And so I want to talk about, I mean, but on the flip side, we are never intended to make it through this forever. Mm -hmm. We will all die at some point in time. And so then it comes back to, okay, why are we not talking about it? Why are we not acknowledging our, our, our time here on this earth? Why are we not acknowledging the connections that we have here with the people in our lives? Like we find it this taboo subject that we don't want to talk about, but death is just, it's always right around the corner. It could be in the next breath we take. It could be in the next moment we turn around. It could be tomorrow, next week, next year. It doesn't matter. It does. We don't know. This is the thing. Yeah. We have no idea, but we know it's coming from the time we're born. We're going to die. We know this, but nobody talks about it or not many people talk about it or it's shh, don't say anything or hurry up and get over it. Don't focus on the bad stuff. Don't focus on the death, Faith. Don't focus on it. Faith, do you know what you're doing? This is grief. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm living it. We all are. Yeah. Nobody's talking about it. Yeah. Nobody. So I just, well, I shouldn't say nobody. There's not a lot of people talking about it. Yeah. And so like, I want to hold seminars on how to plan your own funeral. Like, and people yes. are calling me weird, but I'm like, why not? Why not take that burden off of your loved one, off your family member, off of your, you know, significant other, your children? Because when that happens, like yeah. those emotions are rough and they're raw and you're willing to do just about anything. Mm -hmm. I think puts you in a very bad situation for people to take advantage of you. And yeah. so I, I don't want that. So I know. And people are like, but faith, that's just morbid. I'm like, that is life. <laughs> I, I think that that's a great idea because especially after, um, you know, what you've been through, you know, mm. even what I've been through, um, it's, it's important. I think that that's a great idea to, especially when you have children, <laughs> you know, and yeah. then, or even if you don't, you know, if you're even a single person, you know, then you have your family wondering what right. to do. And I think that it adds a little more element of, even if it's an accident, you know, and it wasn't a plan, you know, it wasn't not a planned death, but you know, it wasn't something expected. No, I get it. Yeah. That if you put you, you know, put time into how you want your family to celebrate your life, I think that 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 would ease the grief almost. It would, you know, because they would say, "Well, this is what you know, this is what Abby planned." So this is how right. Abby wanted, you know, it to be. So, you know, she knew that she was going to go someday and this will make her happy. So I think that that's a, that's a really great idea to put something like that. I think you it know? is, yeah. to me, I find it absolutely freeing because when, when my stepdaughter passed, like I had known her she, I, nine years, I'd been in her life and it was, it took us all by shock. Yeah. We had no idea what she would want for her funeral because she's 19. We don't plan that stuff out at 19. And as a parent, mm -hmm. you don't expect your children to pass away that young. Like you, you don't expect to outlive your child ever. I don't anyway, but here we were four mm -hmm. of us, you know, my husband and his, his ex-wife, and then both of us spouses planning a funeral for a 19 year old child, a 19 year old girl. And it was like, we would have done anything you know, at that point, because we were so stuck in the stages of grief, the shock, like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. Oh my God. What? I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't even know. Like, how do I know what she wanted? She was 19. Yeah. But I think it's just freeing in the fact that if we talk about this and we make this a little right. more mainstream, that it can be like, oh, faith wants this, this, and this, everything else is whatever, but these are the three things that she wants. Yes. You know? And, you know, just planning for it. And it doesn't have to be morbid. It doesn't have to be awkward. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything like that. Cause I know family members that are up there in age in their eighties. Yeah. And still talked about it. Yeah. And I'm like, 
I think we one of the hardest, to... hardest parts of planning the funeral, um, helping plan the funeral when, when um, Kathleen died was, uh, well, you know, like I said, a year and a half prior, her mother had passed away. And as soon as I knew, I drove down state and, and helped her. And I was just trying to, I'm like a doer. Yes. You know, I later, there's a task to be done. Let's just figure it out. Yep. What needs to be done. And then we can breathe and cry and everything right now we need to do this this and this so yeah. I actually ended up picking out um helping pick out the funeral clothes for her mom and then a year and a half later um I didn't realize I didn't even think about it or realize that it needed to be done again and I had to pick out the funeral clothes for my best friend and mm. that's still I I still have regrets about what I trust her in. oh um, no well not really but it's like you have to pick out their underwear too and oh yeah I didn't even yeah. think I suppose and I'm like well I'm not putting these sexy underwear on her I don't it's <laughs> and I think that that's the part that people don't think about right um, I had her dressed a little more conservatively than I think she probably would <laughs> <laughs> but um you know it's you know like picking out like what jewelry she was gonna wear and then she was gonna be cremated too so like I was like I right. like what did she want and we didn't know any of these things so I'm going through all of the stuff in this house that she had let go to shambles over the last year there was no power it was the middle of, well end of the summer super hot and um you know, trying to figure out like, what would, what would she want to wear? What would she want her kids to keep? What would I want to keep? Like it was yeah. uh, like, those are the things that I didn't, I, you know, then I go back and I replay through my mind of, of uh, I don't want my kids to have to go through that. Right. <laughs> and I had just gone through it, you know, the year prior with, you know, with her mom and her mom's room was still exactly the same as it was the day, you know, when, when wow. she had passed away, even a year and yeah. a half later. So it was just, it was just crazy to get back into that house and, and see everything. And except for all the bottles of vodka, but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that was, um, I still, I still look back and think what a, um, tremendous responsibility that I had to yeah. dress her for her funeral um yeah and it makes it's just you know when I think about things like that it makes me sad I just um it makes me sad that I had to do that and then I really wish I would have like done the like done the laundry and like picked out something that she had recently worn like think thinking about that yeah, like the things you don't think about though yeah like she obviously likes the things that were dirty in the laundry because right? she just wore them like why didn't I do that why didn't I you know like <laughs> oh I can laugh about it now but it was just like I really had like even like looking at her like are people what are people gonna think about what she's wearing I don't know <laughs> it's so silly uh but it's not because in that moment, you yeah. know, I just want something that's going to be decent on her. I want her memory to reflect, you know, and we usually pick out the clothes yeah. for the memory to reflect. Yeah, uh, exactly. We want something really nice. We want them dressed in their finest. Yeah. Um, and looking like, you know, like a queen or a yeah. king, you know, however they are. As it, but when it comes down to it, we also want them to be who they are mm -hmm. and to look who they are or who they were um, yeah. and how we always remembered them yeah and so that's a fine line like okay yeah. which one do we go with where do we go what do we do and yeah so we, didn't have, we didn't have that option because of the car wreck so there yeah. was no open cat there was nothing yeah um for us so we didn't that's so that's something we don't have the experience with yeah but like with all these other experiences these are things that people don't think about and, but it's stuff that we do need to think about. Like, it's not necessarily for our sake that we're doing it, like planning yeah. our funeral. It's for those that are coming after. So that making they it easier for them because mm -hmm. they're going to be grieving and going through a lot of, you know, their own thoughts. And their, turmoil. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, um, talking about my friend though, um, in 2000 so she passed away in 2016 okay um in august of 2016 my stepbrother august, hold on hold on august what of 2016 the 27th 
oh, because my daughter, my stepdaughter was August 10th of okay. 20. Oh my gosh. We're like so close wow. together. Yeah. <laughs> but like right before her, um, the year prior to her, my grandmother had passed away. And in 2011, only three weeks after I had my oldest daughter, my stepbrother passed away. But Kathleen's death affected me so much more than any of those other relationships, any of those other deaths, you know, even looking back at, you know, memories of obviously my grandmother lived a really long life and it was awesome, you know, but, and then even, but my stepbrother, he was only 29 and had two little kids, but that oh. still didn't impact me. And he was one of my husband's best friends too, but still even, you know, day to day, it affects my family, but not, not me, you know, not as much as her passing away is because like I said, it was like a sibling. It was, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I equate it to is, um, a sibling passing away. So it's, um, helped me really understand, um, or just seek to understand how relationships, um, can be meaningful in different ways to different people. And that, Absolutely. you know, even, you know, it's, you know, even somebody that you've only befriended very frequently, how they can be one of the most important people in your life, just because of the connection that the two of you might have. And so that's, I think what's really helped, helped me, um, you know, with her passing too, is just understanding relationships a little bit more and, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, how two people can just be connected on a different level. Like you're saying, like you're, you know, like a spiritual level, almost, uh, it doesn't matter the longevity of the relationship. If you're impacting each other in this positive way that you can become the most meaningful person to somebody, even after a short right. time. So, it also yeah. I think goes to show how much people, um, hide from those they truly care about. Um, so that you don't really like, people that are suffering, they don't want others to know. Yeah. They want you to think that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and that they're, you know, when things may or may not be like a lot of times, you know, you don't, I mean, just like, if I'm talking to you, like, I'm not going to tell you all the, the horrible, bad things happening in my life because I don't want to drag you down. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make you feel bad. And so when I walk and I see people, even ones that are people that are maybe having a bad time and they're angry or whatever we call them the what the Karens of the world or whatever they are yeah like what are they what what's going on in their world that has pushed them to this point right what is going on like what are they dealing with what burdens are they processing that are pushing them at this to this moment and so for me it gives me a little bit more love and gratitude for the people that come into my life and acceptance for where they're at. And maybe they don't know that they're acting this way. Maybe they don't know that what they're saying or doing or being mm -hmm. is, is yeah. not nice or is mean or hurtful or whatever. So it just, I don't know, for me, it's just, it's different mm -hmm. now. I don't take as many things for granted that I used to. I mean, obviously we still take things for granted because we get comfortable in our lives. Yeah. It's normal. It's natural. It's life. But one thing I am very stringent on is I take tons of photos and I make sure that I connect with everyone that comes through my world or try yeah. to, I try to. Yeah. So, um, how are the stages of grief? How do they how did you navigate through them? I know that's kind of a weird question because people are like, oh, well, first you start with this one and then you go to this <laughs> one. But you know as well as I do, that's not exactly how they go. Well, I did start with denial, which is oh, the yeah, first absolutely. one because um, I got the phone call from my dad and I immediately went, went to my phone and texted my friend and said, are you okay? What's going on? And Mm -hmm. I had just been told that she died and I'm texting her saying, are you okay? What's going on? Because I was like, no, that can't be true. So, yeah. um, that was immediate. And then, um, I don't know, you know, do you ever get to the acceptance stage? I mean, I guess, but then I go, like you said, ping ponging back and forth to like, not so much denial. Cause obviously she, I know, you know, right. Passed away. Right. But, um, uh, 
anger for sure. Um, depression was interesting. Um, so I don't know that I went through bargaining. So you bargaining is, I think, what, you, what your third stage, right? I don't know mm -hmm. that I ever went through that. Um, I think I skipped that one. But the depression stage was interesting because um, for like the first year after she passed away, I ended up losing a lot of weight and drinking a lot of vodka because that was what's what she drank so I started right. drinking a lot of vodka and getting real and apparently my mood had changed I didn't notice it my mm -hmm. cat started losing hair oh because I was depressed mm. and then my boss had said something to me and my dad like six months later my dad had said something to me and my boss had said something to me about you know like I was still functioning fine but yep my mood had changed the way that I reacted to other people had been a little bit, you know, had been different, not, you know, my normal self. I don't think that I was bad necessarily. It just, I was just getting through life, you know? And, um, so I think that that depression stage lasted a long time until a couple of people stacked me out of it. And right. so then, I mean, so even now, um, almost seven years later, um, right. I don't know. I'm doing math. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I go back and forth still between the acceptance and the anger, you know, so, yeah. you know, even now, yes, and I think that I will, you know, you know, there's other people that have passed away in my life, you know, it's, it's not fair that my stepbrother passed away with two little children at 29 years old, mm -hmm. but I got to acceptance pretty quickly. Um, I understand it was like a medical thing. It was completely a fluke thing that he got sick and then died from a pulmonary embolism. And that caused my stepsister to go get tested and found out she has a blood clotting disorder that we didn't know that he had. And so now she takes precautions for herself, for her life. And, you know, we got through that, you know, when older right. people pass away, you get to that acceptance stage really quickly because they lived a good life. But mm -hmm. for a 32 year old, you know, person with just a bright future, um, with that, died because she drank herself to death and you know I always I always think that she you know she committed suicide I think that she drank herself to death on purpose right after her mom had passed yeah. away yeah yeah so I go back and forth now and I probably will my whole life between I'm gonna be you know turning 50 you know when I turned 50 or 60 thinking where would she have been at this point you know I'll probably go back and forth between acceptance and um anger probably my whole life thinking about this specific situation sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think I, I think I volley between angry depression, you know, if yes. my depression, it's not just angry, it's angry depression. Sure. And then it's, you know, cause I, I accept the fact that she's gone. I know this, but it doesn't right. stop the anger and the hurt and yes. all the, what it could have should us. I still go there every now and then, because I mean, we're human. Yeah. And, and going back to like what you talk about, like with the different relationships, so like your stepbrother versus your best friend and, mm -hmm. and how it's a different, you, you have the different emotions and the, and the emotions tied to it. And I've told people this a long time. It's like, you know, like growing up with you and your siblings, you, um, experience life. Like you, you had the same house, you, you know, the same parents, whatever, all growing up. But mm -hmm. yet you both have a completely different view on your mm -hmm. childhood, mm -hmm. on your mom versus your dad, on yeah. your other siblings, you know, your viewpoints are vastly different. And I think it's because of the emotional connection that you put with these people and, and these, these, how well you connect with them. Yeah. So it's like this view, this lens that you're viewing everything with, and it's different for every person. And so between your stepbrother and your best friend, mm -hmm. obviously connected with your best friend way more than you connected with your stepbrother. Yeah. And it could be because you were younger. It could be because you were both girls. It could be, you know, mm -hmm. lake life, who knows, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. you know, yeah. but I find it fascinating, um, how people react to different things as well. So, you know, cause grief just, it pulls a lot of things out of you, um, things that maybe you're not ready to deal with, or, and a lot of times we compound it with more grief, or we try to self-medicate with alcohol mm -hmm. or drugs or overworking or overeating yeah. or whatever the case may be, you know, there's, you know, 
So, but thank you so much for sharing all of this. Yeah, thank with you for everyone listening. And if you could give one valuable piece of advice for someone going through this, someone that is, you know, their best friend lost their best friend, lost someone significant in their life, uh, what would you say to them? I would say to give yourself some grace to, you know, take the time to, um, you know, kind of sit with your grief and think about um, just how life, life doesn't have to move forward um, because you're, you're, you're still living. You didn't, you didn't die. Um, they did. Um, and that stinks, but you're still living. And how are you going to, you know, live for them now? And so that's what I take with me living with, you know, keeping her memories alive and how am I going to live my best life now? Um, thinking about the fact that she has it, that she doesn't have that now. So that's what I take with me and therapy helps, you know, it took me six months after she passed away and my dad and my boss at the time to tell me you are really kind of crabby, um, to kind of, you know, to go into therapy and, and, you know, kind of then to start talking to somebody other than my husband about how I was feeling because he, I mean, he didn't really understand, um, you knew how important she was, but he didn't lose her. I did. Right. And so being able to talk to somebody else, um, kind of helps too. So that's, I guess that's kind of some, some advice that I would give and that, like you said, it, it, you know, it, the stage is ping pong. And so just, uh, be aware of how, how you're feeling and, you know, let, let the, let it just flow. I love that. That's fantastic advice for everyone listening. And if you guys want to connect with Abby, I will post all of her social media links below, um, tell her hi, and thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned thank to the next you. one. Thank you so much for listening to this special episode of Release. All the links plus a few extras are posted in the show notes below. And if you think someone you know could benefit by listening to this episode, please share it with them. And as always, keep going, keep being, keep doing. You are amazing.